guys, today I'm going to do two mini reviews of The Power by Naomi Alderman and The Seven Imperfect Rules of Alvira Carr by Francis Maynard. I'm going to start off with The Power because I did not enjoy this book, it got one star from me, it was really badly written. I mean, I did a full Goodreads written review, so I'll link that down below. It's got some swearing and it's got spoilers down below, but they are hidden. Um, I just felt really strongly about this book. It was just so bad. Um, I mean, it's got Electrifying at the top by Margaret Atwood, and I hate Margaret Atwood's writing. She says so little in so many pages, and then when actually something does happen that is actually substantial, um, she just glosses over it. And I just don't get anything from it at all. And that was exactly the same with this book. There's a subversive little twist right at the end, which I'm not going to talk about because it's a spoiler. Um, but that honestly made me feel slightly better about the book, but it just come too little too late for me. Keeping with how badly I think it's written, it's got a four point perspective. One of them's from a man. Um, there's lots of diversity in this book, which I really enjoyed, but also the voices just seemed quite cardboard. Like I was hoping for more fleshy out characters and the world just felt so even though it's meant to be a dystopian of modern day it just felt so detached and so unrealistic um i didn't i didn't feel like it could happen at all i didn't feel like it was actually approaching the issues that it was like feminism and power and male patriarchy in, in any sort of um, important way at all, I just felt like it wasn't good enough. And also the narrative style with the four point perspective, towards the end of the novel they just throw chapters in there of just random people. I skimmed the last half of this book because I just wasn't enjoying it at all and when the action actually did happen it seemed like a bit better but it just seemed a bit too sci-fi for me. It just seemed all over the place, a bit like this review but I just didn't have the energy to put all my thoughts together eloquently for how badly I think this book was um, in this video but in the review it's a bit better. The good thing about it though was that for the first 78 pages I was gripped, it started off well and then it brought in lots of religion and it spent a lot of time in a convent and I think the balance of the four narratives really went downhill. They all amalgamated towards the end but two narratives in particular I felt we didn't connect with as much as the other two and it just felt so all over the place and I was really concentrating on this book as well because I was on holiday, I wanted to enjoy it so actually having a book that I feel this strongly about initially because I'm the sort of person that reads something goes meh and then my hatred grows for it over time like fangirl um, but with this book I just immediately hated it and I just couldn't um, finish it with my a lot of attention it was just not very good. I'd really like someone to give me like a comprehensive why this book is good because I did English at uni and I really like to appreciate books that have literary um, capacity even if I don't enjoy how they're written which is a lot of classics actually. So I am willing to see the positives of this book. I really enjoyed the clever framing narrative but I also think that was just written poorly. So I think altogether a criticism I've seen of this book and that I absolutely agree with is that the plot and the ideas are so great but the execution was not up to scratch. But now on to a charm of a book that got four stars. The Seven Imperfect Rules of Alvira Carr by Frances Maynard who is a lovely lady. She looks so nice and I just would like her to come for tea with me because that would be fab. We'd have tea and cake and we'd talk about guinea pigs and how amazing her book is. And it was just so, so good. I mean, I saw this in foils, which is where I also picked up the power for my holiday um, because of the guinea pigs, I won't lie. Um, but when I actually read the blurb of this, I thought, well, that's actually something really interesting. It's something that I don't read much about and something that I want to be more educated about. Basically, Alvira Carr is a 27-year-old woman and she is differently abled and she lives with her mother, who isn't mean to her, obviously she loves her, she's a mother, but she's very strict with her and it seems like she doesn't give much leeway um, for her autism, um, which Alvira has. And when things go wrong with her mum and Alvira has to do things all on her own, it just takes you on a journey of how she has to navigate the world and how she's taken advantage of and how people treat her differently but how she thinks exactly in the same way everyone else does. She has her own inner thoughts and she thinks she's different. She thinks she stands out because of that but in her head everything she thinks and all her kind words just show how lovely she is and how she is absolutely capable of everything. Um, she just needs that 
leeway and for other people to help her. And one thing I absolutely loved about this book was she has a best friend called Paul and it's not explicitly said um, that Paul has autism or some um, some uh, sort of Asperger's um, but it's kind of revealed um, how he is with her and it's just so charming because it's not framed as something that makes them different in just a really really positive way and they're just such lovely characters and to just be in their heads and to just hear what they think and how they think things is just so eye-opening you have to you hear about how she puzzles through things and the, the plot in this book was very very enjoyable it took me a little while to get into it purely because the setting the scene and the mother um, took quite a while because you had to be invested in Alvira's mother and be able to feel the way she feels about her before the awful things happen. But the way mum is with Alvira is quite difficult to read sometimes because you're like, well that isn't how um, people should be treated. But when, when you understand that Alvira does actually love her mother and it's just a relationship that they've got going, it seems so real because it seems just such a way a relationship could actually be, like rather than a perfect mother-daughter relationship and everyone treats each other exactly as you think. It was just so much more interesting and detailed and brought much more depth to the story. I also love the character of Charlie. I can't say much about him but he is such a lovely, lovely guy and the whole mystery aspect about it of Alvira and her dad um, because she has to investigate her dad who has been dead for a very long time but who she thought was someone who he wasn't it was really great because it was like a little detective story as well and just so you know I'll, I'll tell you about the guinea pig she actually volunteers in a little guinea pig um, support them to where she gives out guinea pigs and people stroke them and they're like um, care guinea pigs like you go and stroke dogs and it makes you feel better and everything about this book I just really really enjoyed I'd recommend it to anybody I hope you enjoyed these mini reviews I don't want to dissuade you or persuade you to read these books I just want you to make your mind up on your own so we can have a chat about them below in the comments but I hope you enjoyed them anyway and I'll see you on the next video bye